Now let's discuss question number 61. Which group of animals belong to the same phylum? Now here the options are first one earthworm that is annelida, pinworm that is in Ashkelminthes or Nematoda and tapeworm Platyhelminthes. So these are three different phyla so this cannot be our answer. Second option prawn, scorpion, locusta. All three of them belong to arthropoda. So this is the answer. Let us see the other options as well. The third one sponges, porifera, sea anemone, cnidaria, starfish, echinodermata, different phyla. Fourth one malarial parasite that is plasmodium, protozoa, amoeba again protozoa and mosquito is arthropoda. So the only choice where all three animals are from the same phylum that is option 2 and that makes our answer as 2. Now let's move on to the next question, question number 62. It says which of the following cannot be detected in a developing fetus by amniocentesis. Now we know amniocentesis is a technique to check the prenatal status in this a small amount of fluid is extracted from the amniotic sac and then it contains some sloughed off cells of the fetus which can be tested. Now from those cells the sex of the fetus can certainly be found out because there can be either XX condition or XY condition that means whether it's a male or a female that can be found out. Now this has been banned in our country that's why because it results in female feticide. Down syndrome is trisomy of 21 that means the 21st chromosome is having three copies trisomy of 21 chromosomes and then jaundice. Now jaundice is not affected in the DNA of the cell so this cannot be found out by amniocentesis. The fourth option Klinefelter syndrome this is XXY condition that means the child will have 47 chromosomes where there are two X and one Y. So the only choice here is jaundice which cannot be detected by amniocentesis. So the answer is 3. So let's move on to next question that is 63. In question number 63, we have to discuss which is the major role of Golgi complex. So you know the organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, their functioning is interrelated, right? Now endoplasmic reticula form certain chemicals and these chemicals, they are packed in the vesicles and these chemicals then they are transported to the Golgi bodies. So it means the materials which are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum with the help of the vesicles. Now this material is transported to the Golgi bodies. Now in the Golgi bodies, these materials, they undergo modification. Like if we talk about the proteins, to the protein there is addition of sugar chain. Yes, there is addition of carbohydrate. This results in the formation of glycoprotein and formation of glycoprotein. This is known as glycosylation. Right? Along with that, lipids, they are also modified. To the lipids, there is addition of carbohydrate, addition of sugar chain, which results in the formation of glycolipids. And the formation of glycolipids, this is known as glycosidation. Right? So these are the two important modifications of protein and lipids performed by the Golgi complex. So now we can see which is the right option associated with the role of the Golgi. So amongst these, now the right option is three. Yes, modification of protein and glycosidation of lipid is done. So it means for the question number 63, the right answer is three. So now I will be discussing next question 64 here. 
Now let's discuss question number 64. Select the correct match of the digested products in humans given in column 1 with their absorption site and mechanism in column 2. Now here these two columns are given in which we have some of the end products of digestion and in column 2 we have the site of absorption and the mechanism. Now in this first one fructose and Na ions absorbed in the small intestine by passive absorption. Now in this case the absorption of fructose is facilitated transport requiring sodium ions. So this one doesn't fit the description. The second choice glycerol and fatty acids absorbed in the duodenum and move as chylomicrons. Now in this case they move as missiles and chylomicrons are formed once the absorption has already occurred. So that will be occurring within the enterocytes. The third one cholesterol and maltose large intestine. So the site itself is wrong large intestine mainly is concerned with absorption of water and few minerals but not maltose or cholesterol and then fourth choice glycine that is an amino acid and glucose absorbed in the small intestine by active absorption this is the correct choice because these are two very important molecules which are absorbed even by expenditure of ATPs so our answer is four Now after this let's move on to the next question, question number 65. Now this question says menstrual flow occurs due to the lack of. Now in this case the options are these various hormones mentioned over here. Now in this case first of all menstrual flow occurs when the endometrium sloughs off and endometrium is maintained by progesterone and as soon as the corpus luteum regresses and the level of progesterone declines the endometrium can no longer be maintained and it starts sloughing off leading to the menstrual bleeding so here our answer out of these four hormones mentioned that is FSH oxytocin vasopressin and progesterone the answer is progesterone so it is option number four as our answer Let's move on to question number 66.